Can you hear me? I'm just having some yogurt for dinner. This a new referee. All right, everybody, call your sons, call your sisters, call your wives, call your lovers. It is time. It is the final of the 2024 BC Open Snooker Championship. Albert Kenny, reigning champ, taking on Merhan Manashkar. It's a best of seven match. Hannah Lisovenko will be the referee in charge of this match with Baltej Atwal doing the scorekeeping. The photos are being taken. And David Burney's in the booth alongside David Putty. We've reached the end. We're almost there. Will we have a new champion? Or will there be championship going back to Alberta? Well, it's great being, <clears throat> great being back here for the final. Looking forward to this one. It should be exciting. The top two from all your 48 players that came from the beginning. And these are the two that made the cut. So... I think this will be a, an exciting final and uh, on with, what, what do they say, put the, uh, get, get the balls on the bays or something like that or over in England, isn't that the saying before all the, get the boys on the bays, I think it is. True, true, but hopefully we're trying to rectify the old boys club, boys, women, that's right, yes. Girls and everyone of the like can play this great game. And we're happy that you're tuned in. We're on the live channel of Snooker Canada on YouTube. Uh, as well, if you wanted to look at all the stats from the tournament, you can show over to the Challenge site. That's www.challenge forward slash 2024 BC Open. Final stage for the knockout round. Or just instead of final stage, put in group stage and you'll see how everyone fared during the round robin phase. So referee Lithovenko is just getting the table set up and will be underway very shortly.
Kind of see how this one fares as I uh, ran into Merhan just uh, in between the semis and the finals. And he actually told me he wasn't feeling 100%, just a, a little ill. So we'll see how that uh, pans out. Sometimes, yeah, you know, you plow through the illness. Sometimes you put your best stuff forward there. They've done the coin toss. Merhan has won. And ladies and gentlemen, we're underway. So Albert's been here before. He knows what it takes to win. This is new territory for Merhan, but Merhan actually Going back to the qualifiers, he was one of the qualify one of the qualify winners. He actually won a second qualifying event, but in the rules that we have stated, if a player is to win two qualifiers, it's the runner up that would get the qualifying spot. And in that case it was Dalton Roy who helped us out uh doing a lot of refereeing. So here we are. It's the final. I wouldn't be surprised in the early onset of this match as some players might just uh, try and go for a few more shots, maybe uh, draw first blood rather earlier. Just getting my uh, stats app set up so we can have some information as we go a little along a little bit. Okay, up and running. And a nice red there that he had. Black wasn't as difficult, but unfortunately in these tight corner pockets that we've seen all tournament long here at top one four seven. Those rass on tables very tricky. So is this the first time Meron's been on the T V table? Or that been on uh, the stream? I believe so, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if he was ever on the TV table at the Q Tour event held at the Corner Bank back in January. I think our friend Rob Richards was doing some streaming, but you out there in Ontario, David, would know better than I would. I'll have to watch him play a bit and see if I recognize the the style. That's a similar play that Albert did earlier as well. In that he opened up the balls on a safety. Marians can't be gifting Albert these opportunities. Unfortunately, Albert broke down a little bit on that first attempt, but you give him a few chances to get in the balls, he's going to punish you severely. I would say that's what we've seen when he's been on the, the stream before, so...
distracted him from behind there? Yeah, a few audience members are just being a little bit uh, loud and, uh, you know, come on guys, if you want to chit chat, there's plenty of room outside. Beginning nerves there, David, do you think, or is it? Uh, so Could a be a touch. Might have expected him to make. True. Uh, yeah, a match of this proportion is new territory for Merhan. Okay. Obviously, as we reported, he wasn't feeling 100%. But it's a best of seven, so. And we're just at the beginning here. Lots of snooker to be played. Obviously, last year, uh, if you blinked, you probably missed the final as Albert and Max Guan were doing battle. And Max is a very swift player, almost too quick of a player. You mean too quick for himself or too quick to, for coverage? <laughs> too quick for himself. I think a lot of us were thinking he might just want to just take that extra second or two just to look over the shot. But hopefully the... Kenny clan is still tuning in in Ireland. Looks like it's probably getting close to 1 a.m. over there. Referee Lissovenko just checking the spot to see if the pink is going to go on its spot or come down to the black. We've seen Albert do this before. He just quietly goes about his business here. No flash, no fanfare, just quietly making balls, playing good position. Staying down on his shots. And Yeah, when we saw him uh, get that ball to clinch his spot in the final it wasn't a big uproarious cheer he just got a subtle fist pump and knew he'd done the business yeah I, I like his style of playing it's very very calm This will be an interesting position on the table now for the blue and black. They can't be touching, but they have to be as close as possible. Very nicely done. Open up your wallet, David. It's coming. Thanks, David. You're welcome. <laughs> Sorry, Albert. Again, that cause may that miss may have been caused by him concentrating hard to play position on that one particular red on the bottom of the group of the four there. 
There wasn't any sort of area positional shape for him to play. I suspect just starting jitters for Iran. True, and we haven't seen him on the TV table. I can't remember if he's played on the other Rasson table in the room, but he might just be finding out that uh, these pockets are just a little bit tighter than the rest of the tables in the room. Mm -hmm. Just take him a couple of balls to calm his nerves down and they say you're not really in a match until you've won your first frame, so Yeah, maybe a little pep talk Marhan gave him after uh, that last visit to the table. Kick-started something in his uh, M.O. It's a little active pool room. Balls are flying off the pool table. You don't have the safety nets up, eh? Nope. I think that might be uh, coming next year. Some stanchions. Do not enter. Or maybe Daddy Warbucks is watching Telly Savalas and he's going to give us a great donation that we can <laughs> find those nice boardrooms that we're talking about. Or even maybe potentially going, if we had the uh, budget uh, and the ability to move some tables, hockey arenas actually aren't that bad of idea because they already have the tiered seating and you can just put the tables down on what usually is the ice, but it's actually a floor. Carpet it up, put the lights... That's sort of what it looks like they do over in England. They they take auditoriums and stuff or um, sports arenas and do that. Community centers, at least. Um, I keep thinking it would be nice to have these tournaments in a, in a high-end uh, golf club in one of the clubhouses where they have the big ballrooms and you could get four or six tables in. Yeah, it was really nice down in Rio as we were at the Rio de Janeiro Yacht Club for the most recent PAPSA Open and Senior Championship. I think they're probably getting close to finishing their day down in Brazil. They had a Q Tour stop this weekend. Mm -hmm. Wishing the best to all our uh, Brazilian brothers and sisters down there at CBBS. Was that one where they get the automatic cue card or they go to the final uh, North American or America's qualifier? I'm not sure about this one that was down in Brazil over this past weekend. It's just because next weekend is the final Q Tour event in Sarajevo where Vito Poapolo is going. Yes, Your good friend Vito.
he was fortunate enough to go and play in the Crucible in Sheffield in April in the seniors as the senior Canadian champion. So he was uh, quite excited. He and his wife Laura went over, I think, I think it's Laura, pretty sure, sorry if it's not, um, went over with them and they had a wonderful time in Sheffield. If you ever do get over there, you can always go to the uh, Ronnie, it's called the Ronnie store. Ronnie O'Sullivan has a store there where you can go buy t-shirts and hoodies and signed snooker balls and all that. So we spent some time in that store and had some fun, spent a few dollars. Yeah, if you're a fan of this great game of snooker, there's no better place to be than Sheffield, England in the latter part of April and early signs of May. Meet a lot of great people there, made some new friends over there because they just share the passion for snooker. Was that your second world championship, Dave, or your first? That was my second last year. Second. So, okay. so this year will be my third. Yeah. Uh, Last year, I really was uh, putting the maple leaf down and saying the maple syrup is here, gents. We haven't gone away. <laughs> We're coming back. Because uh, ironically enough, there was a fun little trivia game in the press room. Uh, myself and Shane, a reporter, got teamed up. And actually, we came in second place. It was a tiebreaker. So I think they were quite impressed by this Canadian's knowledge of uh, various things as well as snooker sings. Yeah. I was like, trying to remember the gentleman's name. He's eluding me, but he came up with the trivia questions. Real nice chap. Apologize that I'm blanking on his names. It's been a long weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. But he, he threw some snooker stuff in there. Obviously, the colorblind uh, question came up. But yeah. then also a question of Steve Davis was playing a match. It wasn't the final against Dennis Taylor, but I think he was playing Dennis Taylor in a tournament it might have been irish mercantile something like that but steve asked for something do you know what he asked for david putty Ooh. or viewing audience do you know what steve davis in this match asked for i'm gonna guess a cup of tea all right i'll let it linger a little bit that's the question out there. Uh, maybe uh, when we start up frame two. So you can all think about it. I know you're online, everybody. You know, don't go off and Google it or anything like that. Put in your, you know, take a guess at it. But when we come back in frame two, I will reveal the answer if someone does not on the stream. He's got, can get by this pink for this red close to the top, right? No, he can't. So a 28 point lead with 51 on the table. <laughs> Mosby Lloyd he's asked, says he's asked for Dennis Taylor's glasses. <laughs> I like the answer, but unfortunately that is incorrect. There's a nice pot. In the jaws of one pocket.
as he tempted to Albert into this red by the pink. Albert hasn't been fantastic with his rest play in this tournament. But that's how you that make a commentator works. look silly. <laughs> that's that's a reverse commentator's curse, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Is that a commentator ruse or something? I, I wonder <laughs> what we could uh, label that. Done. Looks like a good opportunity for Albert to take the first frame. Well, Merhan was, was starting to come back. He was within 20 points. So this is actually a really important visit for Albert to reestablish the lead. As it was getting chipped away bit by bit. And now with only 27 points left on the table, he's 28 points ahead. So he is absolutely in control of this particular frame. Of course, my hand will, will come back as only one snooker is required. A nice big wall of black and blue down here. Unless Albert <laughs> does not want to knock the brown ball off the rail. be ominous with that cluster of uh, pink, black, and blue. Well hit. This could be an, a relatively easy snooker. Yes, sir. Whatever happened there, he didn't want to fluke that yellow in the side. has to be careful of being off there. Okay, no hit. Kiss on the blue. Mm -hmm. And what's the best thing to do when you need, when your opponent needs hooks? Play one back on them. Sure, it should be an easy hit for Merhan, but the problem is, where is he going to leave these balls? Oh. Couldn't see it from here. Did it tick it, or did it, was it a foul? I think that was a foul. Looked like the referee called it, and she did. She did, okay. But in the snooker's required stage, it does not go back. A 
little surprised Albert didn't try to kind of roll that yellow into its own pocket. Get behind the brown here. Hit the cue ball behind the black. I don't know if he can go that way. There you go. This is a good chance for Albert to uh, test his stroke, see if he gets the breakout on the brown. He's got the frame secure. Just went for the pot. And there's very likely to be a concession here at the end of this. Unless he makes it. I see a little exhibition up and down table into the green pocket with the blue. Thought it's going to be close. Oh, ho, 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 <laughs> very nice try. So Albert Kenny takes this first frame, 64 to 23 to lead. One frame to nothing in this best of seven 2024 BC Open Snooker Championship final. And we'll I do step have stats available if you'd like them. We'll let David uh, read over the stats as we'll just take a look at our slideshow of our lovely sponsors that have helped us out. So take it away, David. All right. This will be Albert first. Albert has 80% pot success versus 57. Um, positional play, 73 to 50. Safety, 77 to 50. And shot time, 19 seconds versus 30 seconds. So... 30% higher and table time actually slightly heavier for Mehran, but but very uh, 49 and 51 but the stats basically show why um, Albert will have, will have won that his potting success is higher and his safety success is higher so that will lead you generally to a more successful outcome so We'll keep that, keep these stats in mind as we go ahead. I'll try and do my best to keep them keep them coming. Yeah, Marahan definitely had some chances there in that frame, but uh, just. Kind of looking off table. It just looks like he's just not in good sorts. He's just got a little bit of an illness, and hopefully that can subside and, and at least make a a match of this final. You know, you want both uh, competitors rated at 100 percent, but still great experience for Marhan. I don't know how many big matches he's been in, but it's not over yet. We're just in the second frame with Albert Kenny breaking off. All right, so David, you have to keep your promise. Okay. What, did, what did they ask for? Do we want a little clue? Well, someone has typed in an answer that sounds like they might have looked online. I don't know. Some ice for a neck ache. I'm sorry, Doug Wilson, that is not it. Ooh, okay, that's what I thought it might be. Yeah, it's, you might get it after this clue. It was Mama Cass's worst nightmare. Well, I should know that. That's from my ear. <laughs> All right, as referee Lisovenko takes us back for a second attempt from our hand, Steve Davis asked for a ham sandwich during a match he asked for a ham sandwich okay now I'm going to play really stupid here and why is that a Mama Cass reference what song does that go to didn't she die by eating a ham sandwich oh I was thinking music I wasn't thinking <laughs> death sorry <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she died from actually 
but I think the big roll of laughter that we had in that quiz in the press room is myself and this gentleman Shane going against Ivan Hershowitz, who is the uh, press officer, and oh, who was his partner. But the tie-breaking question was, Usain Bolt has run the 100 meters in 9.8 seconds. Can't remember the gentleman's name, but this 100-year-old gentleman ran the 100 meters. It was the fastest 100-year-old person to run the 100 meters. How fast did he run it? Now, by default, when numbers come up, I always go 21 because that's a good number. 17.8. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but Shane was like, oh, it's got to be more than that. So he said 42. I'm like, well, let's split the difference and maybe go, you know, 35. So we said 35. <laughs> Ivan and his partner said, just like Mosby on the stream said, 12 and a half. We almost fell over. <laughs> a hundred year old man is going to run it three seconds faster than Usain Bolt. Oh, the uproar of laughter was just amazing. <laughs> but it actually turned out to be 25 seconds. Okay. So. So looking forward to seeing my uh, brothers and sisters in the press room this year at Sheffield. They're always good for a laugh. And obviously you want to give uh, Rob Walker a big hug. He's a great MC at all the snooker events and really did a wonderful thing last spring after the World Championships. Did a bike ride through Ireland, and or coming from Scotland actually, through England to just support the Jesse May Foundation as he had uh, lost some friends. So a real bike run lost for the words there what was he he was just trying to create some money for those lovely causes and did a great job so a couple penalty points to Albert's favor to begin this frame but it hasn't come away great with that safety he's left a red to the yellow pocket for Merham I have the feeling that Merham just needs to get started there's, there's more than we saw in the first frame yeah it looked like he, he was starting a little bit on some and then just broke down like if he could put up a, a 20 or 30 break you know, early on when there's lots of reds on the table that would just kind of help his confidence know that uh, he's in the final for a reason That one's not a surprise at all, given where he was. It's a bit of a missed opportunity when you have a red close to the hole like that that he made to come up with one. But Probably two rails into the back of the pack. Didn't want to hit that rail. Nice spot. Yeah, that could be a good confidence booster for him. Good angle on the brown to come back down table, but he's eyeing up that green. He does have that open red on the left side of the table, so if he really drew it back.
was watching uh, how still he was on that shot. And he stayed absolutely perfectly still. Didn't try and overpower it either, just figured he'd take mid-range shape. On a TV camera, it a camera angle, it looks like that black would go, but obviously not. Ooh, unfortunate hit on the horn, but he might have been let off there. Kind of got away with that one. I think some of the earlier problems of finding the speed of the table have disappeared for Albert. In the initial matches on this table, everything was coming up short. Oh, this has got to slow down. Oops. Not that bad. If it ran a bit more, you would have had that right into the left middle. Ball up here a bit. a bit more. It's got a rather elementary starter on this red into the right middle mm -hmm. with blue into the opposite middle. Pretty much automatic blue shape. Easy angle to run through bulk, come back up. I do really like how Albert strikes the ball. He's uh, technically very sound. Certainly playing with confidence now. Putting that red in at the speed that he did.
Well, both these players do like pot and balls, that's for sure. They're taking things on. Interesting how that yellow and blue up there, it's a nice little safety area if someone can find it. The pack is still fairly, the red pack is still fairly tight. They're kind of interlinked. But one shot getting in there to break them up a bit will open them all up. I don't know that he has the angle on the brown to do this. I wonder if that back one on the middle right of the pack went, but it looks like he's not taking that on. Starter ball available for Albert. And if he doesn't have position that he likes here, there will be no shot here from our hand. I think he likes the angle on this blue. One shot to nothing just on the left side of the pink there. But there's that spot we were talking about. Yeah, the blue might have gone home back to its spot, but the yellow stayed there and just the saving grace Albert needed. As he's got the snooker and he hasn't left that opening easy red at the top right corner. So Marin's got to be mindful of that. Decent effort. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great hit. He's unfortunate in the sense that he didn't make it. And this ball is makeable, but Albert has to uh, do something to create shape. Nicely done. True, I almost thought just with the angle he had, obviously us maybe subpar players would have played uh, that with top, come off the top cushion. But not for the 2023 BC Open Snooker Champion. I see him tapping the table there. He's a little frustrated with himself for his position on the last two blue balls, actually. He hasn't come up as far as he had planned. These should be easier reds. But back to the yellow ball again. Nothing Beautiful. wrong with the safety game. 
And you gotta have all facets of the game to be an accomplished snooker player. It's not all about just potting balls, making high runs. It's a time and place where you need to leave a telling safety or a fiendish snooker that Albert just has done. Decent hit by Marehan, but unfortunately he's left a relatively easy starter here for Albert. Oh, I think going for the more blind cut to go up table. So not too long ago, Marhan was only four points behind. Albert has now built another 17-point lead. Fascinating. Just broke well, down. That's on a product that. of being too close to the rail with the cue ball. Looks like he may have got away with it again, though. Obviously, that red by the black doesn't go in the corner. Yeah, it's interesting when you're kind of not feeling well, you know, you don't want to cloud your mind with many thoughts. So sometimes, and more often than not, we see it even with clear-minded headed snooker players that uh, the first shot is usually the right shot that comes to mind. Yeah. So I think our friend Cliff Thorburn, 1980 world champion, you know, he knew the shot when he first got to the table. He just wanted to look around just in case there was something else that he didn't see. And then quite often you end up back on the same shot you first saw. Them. an interesting positional shot. Brown coming up the left side of the table. Went really coasted down for him. Mm -hmm. Almost like the table sped up on him there. I know there's a mass search for an iron and in <laughs> between the semis and the finals. They wanted to get the table iron, but we did find one. We found a plug. Just the outlet was uh, Czechoslovakian, not English. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> And no one had an international adapter. No, not at all. So. Yeah, if we had a bit more time, maybe we'd dispatch someone to head down to the dollar store just down the road, maybe, and pick up a household iron. Still effective. Obviously, the uh, snooker irons are really effective as you charge them up and then they're cord free but in a pinch you can still use a regular iron to iron your dress shirt and then iron the table i burned out my table iron and now use a house iron for it And when we're talking about iron the table with the these napped cloths, over time the nap is going to start sticking up a little bit. 
causing uh, the table to slow down. So with a nice warm iron, it will push down that nap and kind of create a more skating rink kind of feel on the table. In snooker, there's a, uh, or in any cue sport, there's a thing about hitting through the ball or following through and accelerating. And if you don't, you end up poking the ball. And I think that's exactly what Marhan did on that last red into the right corner was he, he decelerated and kind of poked at the ball and didn't give himself a chance to make it. Albert hasn't backed away from any of those blue balls in the corners. He's missed a few, but he hasn't backed away from them. Temptation is the black in the side pocket, but that would not be the right shot for the 22-point lead. Temptation. That's a great Tom Waits song. <laughs> I wonder if Tom's a snooker player. I can kind of see him being enthralled in the game and all the intricacies. A man of many talents. He's going to cut the pink into the left side. He's playing, so trying to get past that red. Oh, he won't like his next shot. Or maybe Moran will take this one. I say I better not go too far. Nope. <laughs> Pink was there waiting for him. Mm -hmm. Just had to make the red. Uh, trailing by 16, with 35 on the table. Pool player would be playing a bank here. Snooker player plays the hook. Very nice.
Certainly the um, one miss and three putbacks would all be in play here. If this was to be missed. He's going to put him back. So a little bit of movement on that yellow. Good thing referee Lissovenko marked where the cue ball was with that Taylor's pencil. We do have the paired on cue ball markers as our good friend Kevin Patrick. Or not Kevin. Who's the referee? Not Kevin. Is it Kevin Patrick? He's the referee, yes. Yes, Kevin Patrick. Kevin. Yeah. He showed me that little trick with the Taylor's pencil when you uh, just use the notch in the paired on cue ball marker yes. to put the mark there. It's quite effective. It's interesting. I asked Brendan Moore, a uh, professional referee, uh, is that an idea for maybe speeding it up for replacement of the cue ball? And he's like, well, if you start the shot by putting there, you're assuming that the player is going to miss. So, mm, so psychologically, it's maybe going against the player. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this for frame ball. And a little bit more roll, as you can see, he's sweeping the table. This is snooker, not curling, Albert. <laughs> Good to see him going to the extension. We all have these extensions nowadays, and sometimes we're just too lazy to use them. Sure, I do remember an older gentleman when I was first getting back into the game. I think I was playing my mother's boyfriend at the time over in Seashell. The one gentleman said, don't stretch. Whatever you do, don't stretch. And that's just been glued into my psyche. And I'm like, whenever I need an extension, I'll reach for it. Mm -hmm. The other one that I kept hearing from my dad was chalk up before every scratch. <laughs> and Marahan just looking at the scoreboard. He's trailing by 29 points. There's 22 on the table. So just two snookers. And well, pink's in an interesting spot. If you can find some uh, salvation you behind it. Tuck it in there. Mm. Has to be mindful queuing over that pink right now. One for one. Or maybe not. Uh, he's putting a lot of swerve on this. Uh, almost. It's <laughs> so another one. Is he going to swerve again around this blue? Where's that cue ball headed? Oh, no. Oh.
Yeah. Gonna do three on the side. <laughs> Still needs two yeah. successful mm -hmm. snookers. Or one seven point to force a uh, respotted black, but then also need the pink and black, so. Ooh, oh. No. No concede here. That's Probably. a concession there. So Albert Kenny takes that frame again to extend his lead two to nothing. Important third frame coming up. Can Albert extend his lead to three nothing to make it a tough challenge for Marhan? Or can Marhan get his first frame on the board to inch closer in the final of this 2024 BC Open Snooker Championship? We'll be right back with frame three. And Marhan getting settled to break off for frame three to get us going. A frame, uh, I think that he desperately needs to win. Trailing three nothing in a best of seven is uh, definitely a challenge to come back. It's pretty much you got to win everything. Has been done before, but surely a tough challenge. There's that Albert safety shot again. Getting the ball into bulk, but opening up those reds. It certainly is a statement about his confidence and his ability to make some balls. Again, there were lots of, or are there any number of other safeties he could have played there. Oh. 
Oh, the dreaded double kiss. Opportunity right away. Come on, Marahan. I know you've traveled the world. Double kisses are only good in France. <laughs> Not to mention the butter and the cheese. And the wine. That's true. We need to get talking to uh, the red, white, and blue. Talk to Marcon, my birthday brother. See if they can get some snooker tournaments in France. Touching ball. Oh, that's for Leo Silvenko. Not declaring a touching ball. Marhan doesn't seem to have a problem with these corner pockets. That's a heck of a pot from where he was. Can you get back up for a red? Going for this one. Around the other side for a black. And Hold quick. on. Nice pot. Unfortunately, the color's not nice there. But. No matter it's what he did, position was going to be tough there. It had to be pretty much perfect to get good position. Yeah, uh, Albert's just saying, oh, Moran, you take a nice tricky red into the corner. I'll do the same. A little too hard or perfect? Not quite the right angle. They both really do get down on their shots right away. There's very little wandering around the table and seeing what they do. They've They've played enough to know what the situation demands, and they just get down and do it. Nice block. Yeah, you're not watching Canadian national champion Jason Williams, who's quite notorious yeah. for uh, bopping up and down. Strong player, but he does have the tendency where you feel like he's getting down on a shot, ready to pull the trigger, then pops up, something throws him off, goes down again, pops up, walks around, gets down again. But... Uh, it's an individual sport, so we all have our different yeah. ticks that we do. I've refereed a number of Jason's matches over the years. And what I would say is that Jason is um, getting much faster than he used to be. He's brought it up a notch. is going to be close to the pink. True. Maybe something happened to Jason down in Brazil. <laughs> we
we do know at the professional level, very, very slow play is um, not acceptable. The Canadian game does have a ways to go to uh, get to a level of professional level. We believe we will get there. It's just going to take a bit of time and a few years and finding the right players and the right coaches, perhaps the right corporate support. But when the Canadians do get a chance to get there, it's important that they're well, well trained and well coached in terms of the psychology of it and all of that. So what has happened as the Canadians have gone over is that they have been fairly soundly beaten. Um, said with, with respect as well, because we're aware of the history and the success of the game over in Europe. And as yet, we do not have that history of success. The culture. And one thing we do have an advantage still in Canada, but it's kind of dwindling a little bit. Our good friend Cliff Thorburn, you know, Jim White, Brady Golan, Kirk Stevens, they were over there. So that's definitely a shift in the norm. Obviously, if they can just let up and coming players know of what that experience is like. Obviously, the language is sim similar. It's not as tough as for the uh, Chinese players that go over, but just to uh, just to kind of what to expect, how to feel, like what's the life like over there, as it's a little different. But for any Canadians go over there, you'd be in good uh, form if you can find Phil Yates, as he loves the Canadians, you know appreciates our dry wit and sense of humor and actually is good friends with Jim Weich. Surprised that Phil Yates actually mentioned my hometown of Oakville, Ontario, Canada on the mm -hmm. Snooker Scene podcast. But uh, haven't yet met Phil. I need to trade uh, hairstyling techniques with him. Hopefully he could be at the World Championships this year. That is true, Gary. Marco Fu grew up here in Vancouver. Got a lot of great lessons from the wonderful Tommy Lee. Be nice if we could talk to Marco. Maybe uh, see if he could come back and uh, maybe put on an exhibition or two. Delbert just waiting for the uh, Mahjong players just to exit that room. That is that room back there where that door opens. Can't be all tables. You gotta diversify and how you make a, a profit in these billiard rooms. But yeah, if you're listening, Marco, or if anyone knows Marco, come on down to your old stomping grounds. You know, we've got a lot more probably Hong Kong and Chinese players in the community out here, probably a bit more than when Marco was coming up the ranks. That would really inspire, I think, a lot of the youth out here. So I'm pretty sure Hussein Vafari is doing wonders for uh, Iran, all the young players there. Igor Figueiredo mm -hmm. of Brazil has inspired. So it just kind of takes one. As us Canadians probably will remember in 1992 and 1993, the Toronto Blue Jays were baseball's best. And you know what happened about 15 years later? There's quite an influx of Canadian baseball players with the likes of Jason Bay and Russell Martin and Joey Votto, to name a few. So 
it just takes one to kind of kick open the door and then the rest will follow. As that's what happened with Cliff Thorburn. He was the first one over there and came back home to Canada and said, come on, Bill, come on, Kirk, come on, Jim, Brady, let's go. And there have been conversations with Jim White and Cliff Thorburn and um, myself and some others that uh, may lead to something we're hoping. Um, we're, well, you we're know, that there's an awareness of what's needed. Let's put it that way. And um, some of those conversations may happen. I am working with a couple of junior pool players that show some promise. And we may be able to pick a couple of good snooker players out of a crowd of good pool players. It's one of my hopes. And don't forget the Dasani boys out here. Actually, uh, Aaron... Vinit's youngest actually won a match in a qualifier this year. Nine years old. Fearless Nine Potter. Old, nice. Fearless Potter. Doesn't in have a full grasp snooker, in snooker. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Vinit's boys are just eating up snooker with a fork and spoon. They love it. They can't get enough of it. There's some, obviously, safety and tactical play to learn, but they, they're getting on the table. They're putting balls in the bottom of the pockets. And so that's mm -hmm. a great start. Nice to hear. It's nice to see Margot, who played in this tournament. Uh, you know, 16 year old player, although she's originally from Ukraine, but makes home here in Canada with her mom, Hannah. Maybe she can uh, represent the Maple Leaf on the world scale. really feels like Albert's kind of just going for the jugular. You know, two one adva two nothing advantage. He can you know, go for more shots, and he knows Marhan's kind of reeling a little bit. Great frame winning opportunity here. Mm -hmm. It's just how calm he is over these shots. There's no stress there's no strain he knows what he's trying to do and keeping it simple too short yeah. small compact shots nothing extravagant like obviously that he made that look easy but those are obviously drawback shots are tough to judge a lot of us uh not as skilled players might draw that back a whole lot more or not enough. One of the objectives in playing position is that you're never more than about 24 inches away from the ball that you're playing position on. So that no shot is difficult. You avoid using the rest if you can. No more than about 24 inches. Ooh, I think one of the great players of snooker would disagree. The great Joe Davis in his book, How I Play Snooker, he always preaches 18 inches, David Putty. But hey. All right. <laughs> but that's Joe Davis, and David Putty's train of thought is 24 inches. So you can, you know, go whichever school you want to go to. Joe had better success. <laughs> 
Joe might not have had a lot of competition. <laughs> hmm. As you, it's just phenomenal these days on the pro ranks, just how deep the talent pool is. There's no one like looking ahead to the world championships this year. I don't know if I could predict the winner. You know, there's some obvious favorites, but there certainly could be a dark horse that could come up and spoil the party. Three well, you know, in it. Pink shots in the side with that kind of confidence is a a real marker of how someone's playing. Forty three in it with fifty one on, so Albert just needs one more red to put us in the Snooker's required stage, and there it is. It is. I was just gonna say given a forty forty three point lead at that point he was likely to go for that one because that would be his frame ball and the position of the other two reds was is very tied up so it was relatively safe bank to go for yeah just a fortunate it's been a rather one-sided affair so far Yeah, you got to believe that, uh, as we alluded to, Marehan just wasn't feeling 100%, and maybe that's just the issue here. Or maybe first uh, first final jitters. He'll definitely well, be Someone a in the chat said they felt the 50-point run coming. And we're there. Douglas Wilson, you had, you had a good feeling. You know, can he take the table? Nope. But a good so frame a winning run nonetheless. Yes, Albert takes that one to extend his advantage to three to nothing and this best of seven. And I hate to do this, Marehan, but yeah. I always do this when we're on the verge of concluding our broadcast. A big round of thank yous that I like to do for soft Lance Bromlin. Boy, I couldn't have done this without you, buddy. He's uh, just fantastic. He's my man on the floor, just dealing with everybody from players to referees, scorekeepers, just keeping the tournament running while I do my thing in the booth. And we do wonderful work beforehand just to plan everything out. So Lance, uh, big kudos and thumbs up to you, buddy. Thank you so much. As well as Jonathan Sun, although he's over in China right now, him and the whole crew here at Top 147 has made us feel at home. We really appreciate it. Eric Lee and the Star Snooker Club, thanks for joining the team. It was just so wonderful that you were able to open up your doors so we could have this great tournament with such a high number of entries. Patrick Geeky for all that he's doing over there at Snooker Canada in Montreal, doing his best to grow the game back into the limelight in Canada. Rob Johnson and AAA Labs doing the poster and the program that everyone's been enjoying here. He's also coming to the room over the weekend and snapping away photos. So there's some documentation of this great event. Wendy Brown, the owner and operator of Great Pool Starts Here dot com. It's been instrumental. That's where all the players can go and register, sign up, and get involved in this great tournament. Our referees, Dalton Roy, Hannah Lisovinko, Anton Fudishen, Gary Spence, Gary Wallace, and Reed Unger, thank you so much for doing your help there. Our scorekeepers, David Fisher, Duncan Banks, Vinit Desani, and Baltej Atwal, who's doing this final right now. Thank you, thank you so much. And the commentating booth as well, David Putty, coming, tuning in from across Canada. We appreciate your help. Gary Spence and Race and Edel, the analyst is then top notch. Our big sponsors, obviously Godfrey Chan, a big supporter of the game here in the Lower Mainland, always willing to help out, as well as Biocan Diagnostics. And we have a host of other many, many sponsors that fill our program. We really appreciate that great help. 
these players that have traveled near and far. Obviously, most of them are living here in the lower mainland, so it's not far of a trip, but some have come from Alberta, some have come from America, so that's great to see. And all of you viewing audience all weekend long, we wouldn't be here without you. We really appreciate you all tuning in. We might have some more to go. It's an uphill battle for Moran, but we'll see what happens. So thank you, everybody, and let's enjoy the rest of this match. Moran made a nice red to get in. He's got a blue off of it and now running back to bulk. See if he plays a, an Albert Kenny safety. Looks like a great weave on that red. The current result of this match right now comes down to two things. And as I look at yeah. the stats, Albert's safeties have been better. Test. And when he gets in, Test. he's able to make a few more points Test. based on his positional play. Test. Over and above what Marianne has. And, and really those two items alone, safety and his positional play, have, have put uh, Albert well in front. If Miran can get caught up on those, then we'll have a long evening of snooker. Test. Test. Nice long red by Albert. If you just slowly roll this. Oh, no, he's going to go into the bunch. And didn't get a return. Well, maybe. Might have something there on the top for Albert. Doesn't look like it. Best thing for him would be if that ball was frozen on there somewhere. One of those reds. indicating a frozen ball there touching ball if you can get it behind the green and black down there that would be great for him.
Are we gonna move a bunch of reds down the table here now? Quite often where these games end up until someone blinks and leaves a shot somewhere. Yeah, fortunately for us, if they do we'll leave a shot up there in bulk, that black is up there. Freezing the cue ball in the back of the pack. No touching ball there. Very close. Yeah, Maran's not tempted by that same red into the middle. It's it's definitely tricky. I'm a little surprised at that with the pink and blue sitting there, but. Left a few out. Two very makeables. You can use your one over the side pocket. Nicely played. Kind of on the 50 yard line, but test. Pink test. Blue. Test. Test. I hear someone testing here. He didn't have a pathway for that red that's near the top right. Taking the brown with straight draw, most likely. Or this is where the indecision comes sometimes kills people or kills the shot. Yellow is the shot for easier up on the next red. Brown is the one you're not likely ever to miss. Yeah, hopefully for that Still red out in the open on the left. Over the right top corner. Has a choice of left hand siding to keep it down the right side of the table. This is what he did. Beautiful kiss. There's that thinking I'm going to win attitude on display. Pink would have taken the cue ball down through the bulk and not had easy positional shape. The blue gave him positional shape and a slightly tougher shot. And he decided to take the tougher shot without any hesitation.
bit more pace on that just to knock yeah. that red out a bit more, but. This table really doesn't run as fast as some other tables. Just got to watch the push shot or double hit. He plays that in the side. I think he really wants to keep the the, the uh, run going, but So again, sitting on a handy lead, 26 point lead, mid, mid frame. Iran needs to find some, some magic here fairly soon. Watch his sleeve on the pink ball there. And again, Albert has makeable entry shots. Just check to see if the pink went into the right middle pocket. May not like that shot, so he'll go blue first. And now he has an opportunity of really putting this frame and match away. He might go into the reds this time. Yeah, I think going with pace didn't want to really open them up a lot. Kind of a bit surprising. Few ball behind the, or maybe he's playing this one on the side. No, trying to get the cue ball behind the green and and black again. But again, Arhan shooting from the bottom rail. And he will be starting to think now that he really has to push to get something going. Yeah, it's going to be a little tricky with that black up there on the green spot, but the pink is around and the pink will go back on its spot. So he's not out of the woods, but Albert's definitely making it difficult for him putting that cue ball all the way back into the bulk area. I mean, Albert needs, oh sorry, um, Meron needs five of these reds just to catch up. Pretty much.
So there he's, he's going for a shot that might be a 20% or 30% success shot. And again, leaving an entry ball for Albert to come in. I think Albert doesn't mind just, you know, making sure reds go down to the bottom because that's going to shrink Marhan's chances of extending this match. Well, each red that he takes off the table is effectively nine points. One for him and eight that Mehran can't make anymore. So this is another one of his... I'm going to take the pink, interesting. Okay. Thought he might take the blue. He's barely missed any of these during the match. Not bad for a right-hander. It'd be a bit more tricky as a left-hander as you're going yeah. over all those reds. There's another one dead center in the pocket. Red, color red, and actually just color red now, and he's home. Yeah, there it is. I'm sure he would like to uh, to run this out as a final statement. Oh. Well, it ain't over just yet. There's a couple of Two snoopers already. But the blacks down at the far end of the table complicates things. That's a good start there, there Merhan. able to get out of it really doesn't have a problem where he's going to leave a cue ball or a red ball you know such a commanding lead snookers are required Marianne doesn't really want to pot these reds maybe a couple I think he thought that one was in be a lonely place in your chair in a snooker auditorium. But Albert, the man that just can't lose, another trophy is going to be on his case at home. Back-to-back -back champion here. 
He was up against it, actually, against John Robertson in the quarterfinal. The champion almost got beat, but he found something dug in and really hasn't looked back. Well, I've been very um, impressed with his play. I think I've watched or uh, commentated on two, if not three, of his matches, and he has been by far the most steady player that, that I've seen in this tournament. And if there is a deserving winner, other than his rest shots. <laughs> That's a concession right there. Handshakes there. Yeah, handshake the coming. And Killer Kenny uh, does it again. The, uh, the, the right man won this tournament. Yes, yeah, Selver Kenny raising it up again. He is your 2024 BC Open snooker champion. We are going to keep the stream running just a little bit more because we've got the trophy presentation going for David Putty. This is David Bernie saying good night, everybody, and thanks for tuning in all weekend long. Take care. Test, 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 test. Well, everybody, what a tournament that was. Can you believe it? Lots of fun. Round of applause for our two finalists. Come on. First, let's introduce your runner-up, Merhan Manashkar. Come on down, Merhan. Well done, sir. How are you feeling? Your first final? Good to hear, Marhan. Well, you played an excellent match. We wish you were 100%, but there's always next year. You're a feisty competitor. So thanks again for everything. Everyone, your runner-up, Marhan. Manashkar, there you are. You want another one, Rob? All right, the man that seems like he's going to find residence here, a two-time winner. Only Brady Golan has done that in the BC Open that I know about. So your 2024 BC Open snooker champion, Albert Kenny, come on down. All right, thanks for the fist bump. A little bit of cold. Albert, what can we say? Well, the Kenny clan was tuning in all the way from Ireland, so you did them proud. So anything to say back home? I think they're all asleep now. My mom my texted me before the final. She's like, listen, I'll be late and I'll go to bed. But I'll watch it in the morning. So I probably won't even say anything. I'll just let my mom watch it. I'm, 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 I'm my brothers and my friends. Come back to me. Yeah, so just thanks, thanks for people that, that tuned in. Uh, 
family and friends come back home. It's always great to have support here. Uh, and a big thank you to yourself, David, for running this tournament. And, uh, as always, it's, it's my favourite tournament to play uh, on the calendar. Cause it's, it's always well run, great facilities. A uh, big thank you to uh, Jonathan Son as well. And all the staff, all the referees, uh, amazing job. Oh, I can have done it with also Lance Bromlin. He's a fantastic man behind the scenes. And also we had the uh, Star Snooker Club, Eric Lee, his new club, joining the uh, team. So, uh, yeah, just a wonderful tournament. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you back here. Are you playing in Eric's tournament in a month's time? It's, uh, I left it too late. I think, it's, I think it's sold out now. I don't know if he'll create a spot for me. I'd love to come back down and play. I didn't play on them tables at all the weekend, Star Tables, so I'd love to... Uh, I'd love to come back down at the end of the month and play that tournament. So, Eric, if you're listening, you can get a little wild card in there. I'd love to play the tournament. Yeah, I just left it a little bit too late. And it's uh, sold out, but what can you do? All right. Well, I hope you've got a, a friend with you because you got a lot of hardware you're taking away because you also are the high break runner of a 75. Very impressive. And, of course, a back-to-back -back winner. Only Brady Golan has done it. Your 2024... BC Open Snooker Champion, Albert Kenny, everyone.